everyone. I hope you had a great weekend and enjoyed that lovely weather we had. Uh, so today we're going to be continuing in on the Congo uh, and really taking a look to see what happened after the reign of King Leopold II. You saw from last class a little bit about King Leopold's actions in the Congo, uh, what he did when the rest of the world found out the horrible things that he did. Um, there was pressure for King Leopold to give up his colony, and that's what happens. The Belgium actually gives him $2 million, and he receives no, um, no punishment for the horrible things he does. Uh, it's just kind of brushed under the table, and people kind of thought that, like, well, it's done and over with. This is not a happy ending for the Congo, unfortunately. Belgium was not much better in its control. Uh, I do believe they stopped the cutting of limbs, but they were still basically enslaving the people and taking all of the resources for themselves. Um, there is eventually, as we always see, a push for uh, the people of Belgium to have their, not Belgium, the people of the Congo to have their independence. And we do see that. They hold elections and you get this guy who becomes their first prime minister, Lumumba. Uh, Lumumba is not well liked by the United States. Uh, in fact, he basically, although not fully, but he kind of makes some comments about supporting communism. And as a result, uh, there are a bunch of U.S. attempts to kill him, which are unsuccessful. Uh, but then you start to see different factions within the Congo themselves that rise to power and actually throw coups or attacks and overthrow the government. So uh, the next person in our story, Mobutu, he is, basically has a military coup and seizes power. Lamamba is killed. His body is dissolved in sulfuric acid because part of uh, African belief is in zombies. And they thought that if they left the body as it was, that, like, Lumumba would come back uh, and, you know, go against people uh, who had taken power from him. The thing is, Lumumba, even if he was a communist, was somebody who was democratically elected. The people of the Congo chose him. Nobody chose Mobutu. And um, the, even to this day, you have elections not really happening. They happen in name, but they don't actually happen in reality. And it's just kind of sad in that sense. It's a very undemocratic area, and I'll show you in a moment. Uh, Mobutu is not a good leader. Um, he is very corrupt, and you're going to be seeing today some of the things that he did. The United States did love him, though, and supported him despite the fact of what he was doing to his people. So today you're going to be watching, you're basically doing two things. You're watching a video and then you have an answer sheet that you have to give answers to. Um, the video itself is a good 15 minutes. You have to watch all of it. Otherwise, you're not going to understand the questions. You're not going to be able to give me a detailed answer. Because of this, today's activity after this video isn't really that long. Um, I'd say it'd probably take you about 25 minutes to do. Uh, so, you know, today is a good day to catch up and make up missing work as well. Um, make sure you are emailing me when you've turned something in. I am not checking it. Unless, if I've already graded your class, if there is a zero in the grade book, that means I have already graded your class and I am not going back to check unless you tell me to. I've had a lot of people who've turned stuff in and I just happened to see the work that they turned in because uh, another student has handed it in and they warned me and then I go on to check for them and I see yours. You can't just rely on that though. So please, I encourage you, if you turn something in, send me a quick email and let me know that that was done. That way I know to update your grade. Um, you guys have been pretty good, but we wanna make sure we're staying on top of things as far as grades are concerned. Uh, hopefully this week we will also have an answer of whether or not we're going back. Um, so we have plans for either way, but, um, you know, we still want to make sure that we are staying on top of our grades. So you have that 15-minute video. I'm going to walk you through the... Actually, let me get this up. 
uh, the question sheet. There are six questions. Because it is so short, I do expect you to answer those questions fully, okay, in detail. And I also expect you to watch the entire video to get them. Uh, they do go in order, so as you're watching, you might want to pause it and write down your answers as you go. But I'll leave that up to you. So the first question you're going to answer, how did Mobutu come to power? Again, the video goes over it, plus I walked you through that a little bit too. To what media changes did he, he meaning Mobutu, in fact, you're going to change that and make sure it says Mobutu. Um, what did he, changes did he make from the country of the Republic of the Congo? There are about four items he does. Um, give me two or three, okay? Uh, what happened in 1997 to Mobutu? Something happens, and you're going to describe that. Uh, Mobutu, as we were discussing, was a corrupt leader who used his wealth as well as friendships with other countries like the United States for his own personal gain. Uh, there's a story that his wife wanted a car, so he bought an entire factory. And where did he get that money? Well, he got it from the taxes on the Congolese people. Uh, so there's a lot of corruption and basically using the wealth of the Congo to line his own pocket and not really help the people who, of the, the country who needed it the most. Um, I, with this, uh, your, our next one, yes, he's corrupt, but it's asking why do some people of the Congo miss him? Because that's a lot of what this video you're watching is talking about this nostalgia or this reminiscing about how wonderful life was under Mobutu. Give me a couple reasons. And I have a hint here. Think about the soda factory. There's music videos and other elements shown in the video. That's what I'm looking for. Why are these people upset that Mobutu, who at this point is dead, he died. That's not the answer to number three, but he did die shortly after what happened in 1997. So why? What's the reason, if he was such a horrible guy, why are these people missing him? Then you have why was African fashion so important to Mobutu? And what is the connection to nationalism? At this point, we know nationalism is pride in your country. So make that connection. Again, there is a section in the video towards the end about that. And then finally, it goes through what were some of the bad things that Mobutu did. Be specific from the video talks about a stadium, like that's the heart of this. Uh, Mobutu is another person like King Leopold that even though he does all these horrible things, nothing bad happens to him because of this. Um, he is exiled and he's sent away to another country. Otherwise, the person who takes over after him, Kabila, who is still in power, by the way, um, he would have killed him if he had stayed in power. But... Um, that is something that, like, he, it's not necessarily a good thing, and it's going to go through some of those bad things. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you uh, has to do with democracy in, in the Democratic Repu Republic of Congo. This one is 2019. I'll tell you the 2020, although it doesn't have all the different uh, sections here. Let me see if I can find it. It doesn't have all the different sections in it yet for the 2020. The this website rates democracy in basically the entire world. Um, I grabbed data, like I said, from 2019, just because there's more. It's gone down. So today, in 2019, it was 15 out of 100, so 15%. In 2020, it is at 14%. Uh, political rights is about 3 out of 40, and civil liberties is 12 out of 60. It is not free, despite democratic being in its name. And one of the things that I wanted to point out was the video that you're watching talks a lot about how there were, Kabila was opening up elections and it talked about how there was real hope for the Congo to actually become democratic because of these elections. But if you read this last section here, general elections were finally held at the end of December, but major flaws were reported. And voting in three oppos opposition strongholds was postponed on the grounds that ethnic violence, rebel attacks, and the spread of Ebola virus made it impossible to proceed with the balloting in those areas. So what Kabila actually did was, if an area was supporting somebody other than him, he basically made it so they couldn't vote. Um, the results of the elections had yet to be announced at year's end. So honestly, at that point, it, it confirmed that Kabila was still in power. So yes, he had an election. But he fixed it so that he would win. Um, 
basically what this is pointing out is that even though it was King Leopold who kind of set off all of this, things are still not good. And you still see the same patterns from those Europeans. Um, so please watch the video, answer the questions. And if you have questions about anything you're watching or seeing, please email me, post it on Teams, I'll, I'll respond to it. Um, Zoom conference we'll probably have on Wednesday at 930 uh, again, and then um, again on Friday at 930 as well. So those are uh, options. This video and answer sheet will be due on Wednesday, okay? Usual time. If you have questions, reach out. Have a good day, guys.